everyone and welcome to our video on the resistance of wire the required practical this video is designed to help you filling in your summary sheet on this required practical so first to help us with this let's just recap the method you have already seen in the video earlier the first thing we need to do is set up a power pack a meter and three wires in series then add two crocodile clips as shown in the diagram. Then we need to set up a voltmeter in parallel between those two crocodile clips. Then place a wire over a ruler and attach the crocodile clips at the zero centimeter and 10 centimeter positions. What we can then do is we can measure the current and the potential difference and use that to calculate the resistance of that section of wire using the equation resistance equals potential difference divided by current. This is a rearranged version of V equals IR. Then we should move the crocodile clip that is at 10 centimetre position to 20 centimetres and measure the current and potential difference again and use that to calculate the resistance of the 20 centimetre section of wire. We can keep repeating that for the lengths 30, 40, 50 and 60 centimetres. And as in most investigations, we should then repeat the whole investigation three times and calculate a mean. So, Let's have a look at our sheet and how we can fill this in together. So the first thing we need to look at is our variables. The thing that we changed in that investigation was the length of that wire, which means that is our independent variable. And each time we changed that, our goal was to measure the resistance of that section of wire which means that is our dependent variable. You may be thinking, but we measured current and potential difference. Yes, you're right, but we did that to calculate the resistance. There are many things we need to try and keep the same to make sure this test is fair. Some of these things are such as the wires that are connecting the circuit, the power supply from that power pack, and the thickness of the wire that we are using. Okay, so we've just recapped this method. So pause the video and really quickly write down as many of the pieces of apparatus you can remember from my earlier recap of this method. Right, okay, so let's check what you got. Power pack, wires, voltmeter, ammeter, crocodile clips, ruler, and a wire without insulation. You may also want to find a diagram online and include that in this section. So, how would we plot our results? Quick top tip. In investigations, typically, we plot the independent variable on the x-axis and then we plot the dependent variable on the y-axis. So have a think now, we, what would we plot on each axis? So have a check. Our independent variable would go on the x-axis, uh, which is our length of wire. And that means the resistance is going to be on the y-axis. You are then asked to summarise the method. To help you with this, I have just put my method from earlier on in the video on the screen. You may want to reword some of these steps. You don't necessarily have to include the diagrams, but I always find it helps. Pause, take as much time as you need to fill in this section. Results and explain. The results we would expect to find is we should find that as the length of the wire increases, the resistance will also increase. 
a graph of these results should show that the resistance is directly proportional to the length of the wire. And that graph would look like this. If you look at the line of best fit, it is a straight line going through zero. And this is what we look for when we are looking to see if a relationship is directly proportional. This line means that if I doubled the length, I would get double the resistance. I hope this has helped you all with this summary sheet and look forward to speaking to you again in the future. Take care everyone.